Hi everyone, welcome back to Black Book Stacks. I'm your host, Hoshonda Sanders. And I'm here to talk to you about When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Spoiler warning alert um, for plot and um, Okay, so I, I will get right into it. Um, I, my understanding is that Alyssa Cole has written many um, romance novels. I have not read any of them. This is my first introduction to her work. Um, and I loved the tone. I loved the um, premise. Uh, and I was immediately sucked into the narrative, which revolves uh, mostly around uh, a woman named Sydney, a black woman who lives in Brooklyn um, in a gentrifying neighborhood uh, and um, kind of opens with her on uh, a tour um, where she's essentially told she doesn't understand the history of her neighborhood where she was born and raised. Uh, so she decides that she's going to create her own historical tour. Uh, and there are alternating chapters between Sydney and Theo who is a white guy who has come into the neighborhood um, with his rich girlfriend Kim who's obnoxious and um, cries white girl tears at the bodega uh, and um, does the whole thing. So um, Sydney and Theo uh, essentially are the main characters who um, then proceed to um, through the book get thrust into creating an alternative tour that tells the truth about the history of Brooklyn. I love the premise of this idea um, and I love that um, throughout the chapters there are um, there's like a neighborhood uh, app uh, or like listserv our hood um, and, uh, you know, I think it's obviously supposed to be like the, the ones that, that folks use to keep track of their neighbors. Um, and those are written hysterically. Uh, I love, um, Sydney's relationship to her friend Drea and others. You know, she has had some, um, depression issues and health issues in the past and so she um, is aware of kind of her neediness of the ways that she just doesn't always like show up for her friends and that she just needs a lot um, you know there's uh, some other family stuff in the in the book that I also could relate to um, and uh, yeah, like I think that as a as a narrative, it's entertaining, and then there are parts where it kind of falls apart. So there's a company that essentially is disappearing people in the neighborhood, um, and that is kind of their strategy for removing all of the the folks who have lived there for a long time, um, who probably are barely able to afford living there um, because of the property taxes from. Um, keeping their homes. So in order to move them out easily, there is sort of this vast conspiracy theory um, that is uh, sort of uh, unearthed uh, as Sydney and Theo work on their alternative tour. Um, and uh, that is sort of the, the thrust of um, how the book is kind of knit together plot wise. Um, I think that the dialogue is amazing, it's smart and funny. Uh, I like the flirtation and the sexual tension between Sydney and Theo. Um, you can see Alyssa Cole's romance roots best, I think, in their dynamic because it's clear um, that you know she's really gifted at writing about their intimacies. Um, I, I guess I didn't really see the thriller aspect of it as much like it, it, there was there was creepiness in it but it's like not I mean I guess you can't be like you know when no one is watching a creepy novel right like you have to call it a thriller 
Um, but, you know, especially because I spent a good amount of time with Leave the World Behind by Rumat Alam, you know, you can't compare them. But, like, that is a novel that is a literary novel that reads like a, th a thriller. Like, it, to me, um, is more comparable to, like, Get Out, right, compared to this one, um, which basically just, like, has elements of creepiness in it. But it's not really a thriller like it's not like a surprise that um that there's this big bad company coming in and that they might be killing people like it's it's not it's not like creepy to read it's not scary it doesn't chill for me i wasn't chilled by it i just was like oh right this is the part of the plot that they're talking about when they call it a thriller and when they compare it to get out but i didn't feel it as a reader uh, i only knew intellectually that i was supposed to think that because of the way that the book has been branded um if that makes any sense i don't think it takes away from the novel but you know there's a quote on the cover that says like it's this intense psychological thriller and i'm not sure that it lives up to that. Um, it's not, it's, it's not, if, if I were going to give that title to anything, it would be Leave the World Behind, um, which feels a little bit more like, you know, there's, there's a mystery, there's a, a crisis and disaster that's happening off the page um, that impacts the, the characters as they live their lives on the page. And so that creates kind of this tension in the writing that lets you know like oh there's something happening that's unexplainable and wow that really creeps me out right as opposed to here where um, you have a, a novelist who's really skilled at intimacies and dialogue and characterization um, and maybe hasn't done uh, literary fiction or other genre fiction and so it doesn't have uh so it doesn't have the same um impact to apply those same str strengths to a thriller uh, i'm not saying that she can't write a thriller i'm just saying that in this particular case um i feel like you know you, you look at the cover and um you know just this like billing of it as a thriller as opposed to a romance uh it felt to me a little bit misleading because uh i didn't actually feel the thriller aspect of it i just felt like oh yeah what a smart analogy um or allegory i guess you know to uh compare gentrification with horror <laughs> right because it is a horror for uh for many people um and the displacement uh, is as scary uh, as any thriller might be. So those are my thoughts and feelings about Alyssa Coles uh, when no one is watching. I'd be curious to hear if any of you have read it, what you thought. Um, I recommended it in a roundup of books that I was looking forward to in the fall. Um, and definitely feel like it's worth reading it's a quick read it's nice and fast so um highly recommend that you check it out if you're a fan of her previous work because i'd love to hear how you think it compares uh, with her romance writing um because i believe she's like a new york times best-selling author um so uh yeah she a princess in theory was one of the new york times 100 notable books of 2018 and she's written historical contemporary and sci-fi romance so yeah definitely curious to hear if you've uh rec read some of her other work um also if you recommend a princess in theory because i haven't read that um i haven't read romance since i was in grade school which is a funny sentence to say out loud but like i was really into whatever was at the library and so that included daniel Steele. And, um, you know, I guess Judy Bloom is not really in the romance category, but it also included a lot of Judy Bloom um, and some Jackie Collins. I was precocious. Uh, so, so yeah, if you have recommendations of Alyssa Coles uh, in the romance genre, I would love to hear where you think I should start. Uh, and as always, thank you so much for your likes and your shares and your subscriptions. 
Uh, I totally appreciate it. It helps the channel. It helps me. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time. Happy reading.